Welcome to Good Day AWWA. Here's your host, David LaFrance, CEO of the American Waterworks Association. Welcome to Good Day AWWA. Today, my guest is Manuel P. Teodoro, better known as Manny to his friends. He's an associate professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and he is also known for his authoritative and yet provocative blog and speeches at water conferences. I'm excited to let you know that he'll be joining us and speaking at this year's face-to-face -face utility management conference, which will be in Atlanta, Georgia on August 3 through 6, right over here. Today, we're going to talk about his soon to be published next book titled Profits of Distrust. And profits is spelled P-R-O-F-I-T-S. So not the other kind of profits, but the kind of profits that have to do with money. So let's have some breakfast, learn about Manny and hear about what's what he's working on. So Manny, welcome to AW, Good Day AWWA. Thanks, David. It's great to be with you. I really miss the in-person meetings and uh, seeing you every year, uh, once or twice a year at these meetings is a highlight for me. So it's great to be with you, at least virtually and in person very soon. And very, in a matter of weeks, I think, Manny, in a matter of weeks. So uh, all my guests select what we have for breakfast. You selected something called a Kringle. I know right. nothing about a Kringles, but I do have one right here. So tell me about this. I've got one too. Yeah, so uh, I chose a Kringle because uh, apparently Kringles are a very big thing in Wisconsin. I've only lived in Wisconsin for several months, so just a few years, a few months rather, not even a full year yet. And the whole time I've been here has been under quarantine conditions or semi-quarantine conditions. I've not really had a chance to experience much of the local cuisine, so I thought this would be a good time to get familiar. Uh, so mine is uh, an almond kringle from a local bakery here in Madison called Lane's. It's been in business since 1954, and it's supposed to be a big deal here in Madison. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this opportunity to get to know my new hometown as well. Well, let's give it a try. I was able to locate one at a bakery here, just not very far away. Mine is raspberry, although they did tell me Ahmed is the more preferred approach. That's pretty good. That's pretty tasty. All right. Before we get too much in our mouth here, and before we get into the meat of what I really want to talk about, Manny, I do want to just touch base on this book right here that you wrote bureaucratic ambition. And it talks about uh, policy and ambition of bureaucrats. And um, in it, you describe sort of two career paths, one that you frame up as a ramp and the other one as a ladder. So tell us a little bit about what the difference is between someone who's a ramp and someone who's a ladder and disclose for the first time ever which one you are. Ah, right. Well, the idea behind ramps and ladders is that when people start an entry-level job in any profession or industry, they can advance in a couple of different ways. They can join an organization and work their way up vertically within that organization over a long period of time, and we call that a ladder career, You're moving vertically in an organization. Other people will start in one organization and then advance by moving into another organization that's a better fit or maybe an advancement opportunity that comes open at another organization before one is available in mine. So that opportunity appears and I'll move to a different organization. That's called a ramp career. So you're moving vertically as opposed to sort of diagonally between different organizations. I am now on my third university faculty appointment uh, as an empiricist. I'd have to say that's pretty solid evidence that I'm a ramp climber. Um, I'd say so are you, David, uh, given that you've worked for a few different organizations while maintaining a role within the water sector over that entire time. Yeah, I, you could argue that in the middle of all of what I've done, I might have been a ladder. But I think I've probably got a little bit of both, and hopefully I, I've encapsulated the best of both, because both are good. Right? Both they they both are good. Neither is necessarily preferable. They tend to attract different kinds of people and they and ramp climbers versus ladder climbers tend to bring different kinds of things to their organizations. So Manny, this, this book right here that you wrote, uh, it is steeped in research and everything that you do is always steeped in research. And that's part of why you provide so much value to the water sector. And so let's go over and start talking about this next book 
profits of distrust, right? So I want to know what it's about, but I also want to know why did you write it and why did you want to write it now? What were the conditions that brought you to wanting to share this idea and provide that provocative title? Yeah, provocative. I also hope Hopefully, it's a little bit profound as well. I want to acknowledge my co-authors. This is not only my own work. I'm working with Samantha Zulke, uh, soon to be at the University of Iowa, and David Switzer at the University of Missouri. The whole project has a very strong Midwestern accent. I'm here, Wisconsin. Uh, it really is a confluence of a number of factors, and I think it's a book for the moment. It is is a book that's both meaningful generally, but particularly for this moment in American history. It's really a confluence of two things that sort of started to crystallize in my mind. First is the long-term and remarkable growth in bottled water, the commercial water drinking water sector in the United States. It's roughly quadrupled over the last 20 years. I think most of us who are over 30 or 40 years old remember a time when bottled water was a weird novel thing. It's not something you saw every day. Now you will see it almost every single day. Even though we're a country where water utilities provide at the tap a pretty high quality product for orders of magnitude lower prices. So that's one trend that's sort of a puzzle. The other trend is that over that same period of time, we've seen an almost equal and opposite decline in trust in government in the United States. And so you have this one line of a sort of a meteoric rise of bottled water and a simultaneous line that's declining like a meteoric drop in. Uh, trust in government institutions. Those, those two things we don't think are a coincidence. I'm going to give you one little story about when I was flying back from the ACE conference in 2017. I was in Philadelphia that year. I was in the airport waiting to fly home, and there was a crew from, I think, I think might have been Louisville Water. I'm not sure. It was a, one of the utilities that's one of the frequent, frequent uh, attendees. And there was a crew there, and they were in their uniforms getting ready to fly back home. And they were sitting in the airport lounge, and uh, another uh, uh, another group of passengers not associated with the water sector was sitting there drinking bottled water. And one of these fellows who was there and in his in his uh, in his in his utility shirt says to him, "says You know what comes out of the tap over there is better than what you got in that bottle." And then a rather heated exchange started between these poor passengers and this utility crew. And one of the things that these these passengers shot back, well, what about Flint? And that started getting me to think about how these things all fit together. And of of course, the contentious politics of the last few years also say something about trust and faith in the state. You know, the first principle of democratic governance, we're just coming out of the 4th of July weekend, is that governments get their legitimacy from taking care of people's basic needs. When King George stopped doing that, we had a revolution. When people don't believe that governments can take care of their basic needs, they lose their trust in the the institutions of government and you don't get more basic than drinking water. That's what I think I witnessed that day in that airport lounge and the confluence of those two different uh, trends. Well, I guess another lesson would be you never mess with a strong utility uh, employee when it comes to drinking tap water versus bottled water. Personally, I loved it. I love those guys standing up for their product, right? It, it, uh, and you could tell they took it personally. They yeah, felt personally they insulted by that plastic bottle. Well, I'm right there with them. All right. So obviously you have the inspiration, right? You're trying to answer the questions of, you know, the simultaneous growth in bottled water and distrust in uh, government in general. So what were your big research findings? Well, we marshaled a ton of data in this research. Uh, We have three national public opinion surveys. We've got consumer expenditure data, gigabytes of regulatory compliance data, demographic data. And we gathered an original data set of every freestanding commercial drinking water kiosk in the United States. We came to five big findings. And I'll go over them really quickly here. Uh, Wait, so it was freestanding, Manny, it was freestanding what? Kiosks. Water kiosks, these are, these are vending machines where people drive up, they put money in the machine and it, and it vends water that theoretically has been filtered or treated in some way. It comes out of the municipal system, it goes through some kind of a literal black box and it goes into a container and people pay for it and drive away with it. <clears throat> Got it, thank you. 
And they're all over the country. Uh, we mapped every single one of them uh, to look for the demographic correlates, try to figure out what neighborhoods those things are located in. So we have five big findings. The first one is that people who experience problems with their tap water trust government less than those who have consistently high quality tap water service at home. If you experience a problem, you come to distrust, not just your utility, but government generally. Number two, Americans Bottled water uh, consumption is inversely correlated with their trust in government. So to put that in plain language, the more people trust the government, the more they drink tap water. The less they trust the government, the more they drink bottled water. Third big finding, and the one I think is really exciting, is it turns out distrust is contagious. When a water utility has a failure of some kind, it can damage trust not just in its own community, but in communities across the country. And what matters isn't necessarily whether the failure is geographically close, but whether people can identify personally with the places where the failures occur. So one of the things we note is that communities that are demographically similar will have similar patterns of drinking water behavior and responses to uh, failures elsewhere. One of the great illustrations of this is we see changes in behavior in Providence, Rhode Island, following the Flint water crisis because they're two communities that are similar in some important ways. The fourth big finding is that when people experience problems with their tap water, they have a choice. They can complain and try to change the system. They can try to advocate for themselves. They can go to the utility and try to, try to work with them to improve things, or they can exit. They can just quit and, and go to quit drinking tap water and go to a commercial water provider. And what we find is a pronounced difference in how people respond to water problems. If you have problems with your tap water, it turns out that poor folks and especially poor minority communities are much less likely to complain to their utilities and try to advocate for improvements. And they're much more likely to simply abandon the tap and start drinking bottled water instead. And of course that has terrible pernicious effects of uh, second and third order effects because it's more expensive. So they're gonna drink less of it which is not good for their health, and they're going to substitute with sugary beverages and other kinds of bad things. Uh, so it's, it's bad all the way around. Finally, the last big finding, so important for the water sector, is that tap water drinkers are more likely than bottled water to drink drinkers to support a rate increase. So we've got survey data that show that people who drink bottled water are much less likely to support public investments in drinking water uh, infrastructure. And that's kind of puzzling. If you think about it, if I'm dissatisfied with my tap water, I might want to support a rate increase in order to pay for improvements. Heck, it's got to be cheaper than bottled water, right? I can pay $5 more a month on my water bill and save myself $30 or $40 a month in bottled water. If I'm happy with my tap water, I might oppose a rate increase because, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But in fact, we find the opposite. The bottled water drinker is significantly less likely to support a rate increase. Now, water utilities are natural monopolies, right? We don't think of them as necessarily being in competition with Aquafina. But when we think about the, the political support that utilities need to have as their lifeblood for their financial, for their financial health, commercial drinking water really is a competitor. And they really are competing for your customers' trust, their, your customers' loyalty, and your customers' support. Distrust of tap water is what gets people to drink bottled water. So those bottled water companies have every incentive to get people to distrust what's flowing out of their taps. So Manny, and maybe this goes right to the heart of the title, the profits of distrust. Sounds like what you're sort of framing as the commercial water providers, that they might have strategies around creating that distrust. Can you briefly talk about that? Yeah, sure. And they're not even subtle about it. Commercial water companies know that their product is qualitatively not all that different from what comes out of the tap and it costs 10 to 100 times as much. So they have to make people believe that what's in the bottle is better than what comes out of the tap. We looked at multiple SEC filings where commercial water firms come right out and tell their investors that distrust of municipal tap water is their growth strategy. And what's even worse is that commercial water firms often target their ads at lower income communities, at non-white and ethnic minority communities, because they know that minority groups tend to distrust tap water to begin with. So bottled water companies have every reason to rub raw those sores of distrust. Wow. All right. So Manny, I always have to manage the time and there's so much we could talk about. Yeah. But 
let me give you my last question, which is you've got these five things you've identified. You've you've probably got much more in your research as well. Does your book offer some solutions to this challenge? Definitely. Look, I'm an optimistic guy by nature. Of course, we propose solutions. We think that rebuilding trust in utilities begins with utilities and their leaders. Water utilities have to be three things, we say. They have to be excellent. Their performance has to be excellent. They have to be open, by which we mean they have to be transparent in their operations and engaged with their communities. And then lastly, they have to be equitable. That's because of that contagious nature of failure. It's not good enough for, for one utility, one place to be great. They all have to be great in order for us all to succeed, in order for that trust to, to uh, pervade everywhere. Trust is also contagious. So if we can get high quality, excellent, open and equitable water service everywhere, that's gonna rebound to everyone's advantage. Our book closes with an afterword. It's got a 12 point proposal uh, for specific uh, and concrete reforms to the water sector. We don't have time to get into those, obviously. But we think that in not just uh, that the advantages here are not just going to rebound to the water sector, but to society more generally. We think rebuilding trust in the institutions of the government itself start with re literal rebuilding of the water sector because that is the most basic of basic services. The book is right now in the hands of our publisher and we're hoping that it'll be published by early 2022. All right, so Manny, it sounds like the book should be available before ACE 2022, and which will be in San Antonio, Texas. We'll be face to face. Yes. So what do you say? Should we mark our calendars, have another good day, AWWA, just before ACE 22, and give a, another preview of your book? Absolutely, would love that. Uh, it'd be nice to get back to Texas. I already miss it. Right. I, I, I would love doing that, too. So let's mark our calendars. And for the viewers, hope you mark your calendars, too. We'll let you know exactly when that's going to be. Uh, also, both Manny and I do look forward to seeing you at the AWWA and WEF Utility Management Conference in Atlanta coming up in just a few weeks, August 3 through August 6. Uh, it's going to be a great show. We'll all be there together. And then... Uh, we'll have more time together. And ultimately, I do want to wish you all a good day from AWWA and from WEF.